BB Pro, Mr. Tell Like It Is, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Coaching Up. This time, guys, we're going back to the golden era, going back to the days of small waisted bodybuilders. Back in the day, we could do muscle camps and throw seminars for people to watch and learn all that you know. Pretty sure you could do that last year. Hello, wow, you've been darkness, stuck at home for a long, full, whole year. Whew, I'll tell you right now, once I can travel, I will be traveling and doing muscle camps. Let you know. And it could be as early as September. Could be coming to a gym near you. Anyway, guys. Let's talk. We're gonna look over Tom Platt's muscle camp. He's talking about legs. Now, what I wanna do with this, guys, is I wanna go through the training and what about this is often what is not. So I'm gonna go through this and let you guys know that back in the day, a lot of stuff that he had to gather, he had to learn from himself. He had to be his own guinea pig. He had to do trial and error for things to work. The knowledge that he knew from just like reading books for education, everything like that. He didn't have the internet, didn't have YouTube, none of those things. So literally back in the days, those golden era days, these guys were experimenting, not only with enhancements, but training itself to make those things both optimal. Now, you're gonna see a guy here who is both. But how much of his information can you actually take to learn for yourself? I do urge some of you guys to go back to the olden days, go back to those days of the guys where they actually train and find things out themselves and understanding what works and what doesn't. But then again, there comes the point where some of the things that they put on are a little unorthodox, kind of weird. But let's just watch and see what we can learn. Secure. I would never get relaxed. When I, when I endeavor to go down on the squat, I get my whole body tight, my head, my nose, my ears, my ankles, my feet, my toes, the bottom of your feet, your back, your shoulder, everything's gotta be tight. So, so right. I mean, years of your nose, I mean, mm. No, that's excessive, but you get what he's saying. Like when these guys talk, they're talking with passion. So when he's saying like, the whole body's gotta be tight. He's like being aware and active in your whole entire body. I know I'm gonna be successful doing a squat every single time I interact that weight. The second I get underneath the weight and I just get up and I tighten myself up. And that's what you guys have to understand when you're squatting. You need to go into squatting with the approach that you are going to control the movement from the top to the bottom, the bottom to the top. He even says guys, from your head to your toes, grip with your feet. Awesome he's saying this. Now, let's keep going. Nothing can be loose. It's like you're in a t totally tight, taut condition. And everything is pushing you down and up both. You don't relax the bottom or during the course of the motion. Exactly. Stay engaged the entire time. You are. There's not one part of a lift you should be doing that you disengage. That includes both movements. Now I'm gonna blow you guys' minds real quick, okay? Muscles do not push. <gasps> they don't. No muscle pushes. That's just the direction so we understand the opposite direction to a pull. But muscles all pull, every muscle. My chest pulls my shoulder in. My rear delt scaps pull my shoulder back out. My bicep pulls my bicep up. It pulls flexion. My tricep pulls extension. Same with your quads, extension. Same with your hamstrings, they're pulling your leg up. Same with hyperextension and flexion, pull, pull. Every muscle's pulling. Fool your mind. When I thought about that, when I really sunk into my brain, I realized we are controlling both of the movements. We're controlling both ends. That's what you have to understand more and more. The more you really think about the muscle and what it does, and that being a thing that it's pulling every time. When I'm doing bench press, I'm pulling the weight up and I'm pulling it down. I gotta pull to push it, right? I might confuse you guys a bit, but think about it. Anyway. Other than maybe relax, possibly when you come to a complete lockdown. Now let's watch the squat. Head up, my head's always up. Now, one thing I'm gonna say about this, those elbows are shooting back. You wanna get them under more, more, more. We wanna really get the external rotation so we can get that shoulder depression. Even he right there is not going over that one cue. He's missing other cues too, like you know where your feet are, but whatnot. But again, when it comes to this, there's so much that has changed since I started in the gym. I was in the gym when I was 11 years old and things have changed drastically. Not only just training fundamentals, but like we're talking mechanics, exercise science in proper form. So we're just gonna keep watching and just see some more of what we can actually do and apply it to this. It would make this squat even better. This is customary position for me. I was trained by weightlifters, not powerlifters, weightlifters. And they taught me that the squat rack was the altar. So I gotta translate a little bit, right? So Tom Platts, when he says weightlifter and powerlifter, the difference between a weightlifter and powerlifter is a weightlifter is somebody who does Olympic lifts. Your cleans, jerks, clean and press, snatches, all those Olympic lifts, those are weightlifters. So I would say he's saying that weightlifters, they're a lot more fundamentally sound when it comes to squatting, all those movements, right? Basically when it comes to just hip and knee flexion, right? So 
that's what he's talking about that. But at the same time, it's like, cool. But it's understanding that these guys had to go back. It's not like he was like, hey, I went on YouTube and I saw some guys doing some lifts. So I was like, I'm going to do this. He's like, no. He probably have to look for weightlifters that were summer. Now him being a high level, you know, Olympian contender, he probably knew a lot of those athletes back in the day. A lot. Because they stuck around together. They weren't petty like these days where you can't cross over different sports or if you're better than somebody else, you might not like them. It's weird. These guys, man, camaraderie. <sighs> Fanboy right now. Let's keep going. Yeah, I mean, I love these guys. Like, if you like any old school bodybuilder, and there's a lot of that, you know, care, like that personality left nowadays of just like, like yo, man, what's your RPE? Like, <laughs> could you imagine? I'm sorry. Could you imagine asking, oh, Tom Platt, what's your RPE? He's like, RPE? What in the what? <laughs> He's like, going to the squat rack is like life and death. You just gotta go in. Whatever happens, just come out the end alive. What's your RPE? What's that? And to your rate of prestige exertion. You know what I mean? So sometimes it's really about just really getting in there with the right with approach. Like you're going in there to lift. Because again, when you're squatting, you're putting something on your back and you gotta come up. Like that's really the only option you have. I mean, you can't just go down and stay there. And that just looks terrible if there's not any weight on it. But again, you gotta come up. And that's why squatting is that way. Think about like all the big squatters, Ronnie Coleman. Oh, oh, I You know, even Jay Cutler, all these guys are squatting lots of weight. And their mindset going in there, I remember about Kai Green being like, you know, there's no way you're going into that kind of squat just thinking about, you know, it's nice things. Like, there's no way, like if you're getting into a set, like a hard set, and you know, you, everything else is there, you know, your technique, effort, whatever. And you go into a hard, hard set, squat. And before that squat, you're just like, oh man, I gotta do my laundry today. Oh shit, that's gonna, oh. Like, you're not getting that weight up. Like there's, you gotta go, like somewhere in your mind you're going, I know for me, trust me on this one, when I'm doing a big set of anything, it's not a nice place up there. Wow, a whole drawer just for me. Yeah. It's controlled, but it's like a little room that I like keep, you know what I mean? It's just sitting there and it's like, yo, when I get to a point where I need to go in that room and you know, just get some extra energy, I go in that room, literally. It just same with him. And you'll see it through the video. He goes in his room, it's like, switch, duh! And it's like balls to the wall crazy. So let's keep watching this. I love this stuff. Fanboying like a champ here, guys. Best thing to do is to get deep breath on the way down. Hold it and pull it in your, in your abdomen. You make your abdomen tight. And so you bounce, boom, blow out the air when you go up. So that's a really good point too is breathing. A lot of times you guys, breathing is off. And it doesn't mean suck your stomach in like do a vacuum. It means the same thing I was saying before guys when it comes to engaging your core. Because the stomach goes in, some people say suck your stomach in. It's a terrible cue. But those are sometimes ways that people came up with to get somebody to pull their core in. Like, you know, pull your stomach in. You don't pull your stomach in. Now when you're flexing, yes, it's pulling in. And they could be saying the same thing I was saying when muscles don't pull because really, even your TVA pulls. It pulls it in. But to some people, they think pulling it in means do a vacuum or just suck your stomach in. No, it means take a deep breath in. Then when you're on your way down, you're, you're tightening. When I tighten on the way down, I'm holding that weight because on the way down, I'm pulling that weight down. Down and then at the bottom, all the way to the top, right? That's what he means by that. I love it. All the stuff that he's saying there, you know, can apply. You can definitely take the tips in there. He's not really getting into like the details like I do, you know, where your feet should be, you know, one o'clock, 11 o'clock, around that little bit outside show of the part, you know, external rotation of the hips to make sure we're aligned with our toes when we're squatting, proper knee and hip flexion at the same time when we're squatting, you know, keeping shoulder depression, all the things he's not saying, but for the most part, for the basics, he's giving you some really, really, really good basic information. He's not really getting into as detailed as I am. But again, guys, you know, you can just take some of the basic cues from a lot of different channels that are consistent and that can kind of like lead you to, you know, what is, you know, optimal or not. What are the majority of people saying about something that stays consistent? Myself, Greg, Jeff Nippard, even Jeff Cavalier, and most channels will say when it comes to squatting, the exact same thing he's saying, just to a different ring. Anyway. You get in the zone where you just go like animal, and you're like, and you just go, it just, it's a testosterone. Just comes up, he's got a bunch of people around him, his, his adrenaline's going, he's gotta perform. He's going AWOL. Greatest, 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 greatest.
greatest, 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 greatest.